there were two particular tasks that Alex did that really did surprise me. The first one, we were trying to train him to identify refrigerator letters to just sound out the sounds of the letters. So if we showed him like a blue S, we'd say, you know, what color, and he'd say blue. And there would be different colored letters on of different types on the tray. So he would have to choose one of six. Or we'd say, you know, what sound is, what color is, and he'd say blue in that case. And we had a bunch of people at the media lab who were visiting for a very short period of time. I had planned on showing a totally different type of test, but that's what they wanted to see. And normally when he would identify a letter, he would get the letter, but by that time he was so bored with chewing the different letters that he always would ask for a nut. But these people were only going to be with me for five minutes, and I did not want to spend all this time having them watch him chew a nut. So we asked him a few questions, you know, what sound is blue and what color is um, mm, and things like that. And he was fine. And after each one, he said, want a nut? And I said, no, wait, you'll get nuts at the end. And he got more and more insistent. So the first one was want a nut. And the second one was want a nut. And the third one was want a nut. And the fourth one was want a nut. N -a -t. And he had spelled it out. And we had never trained him on that. We had never even trained him on the a uh sound. So he put all this training on letters he did know together and figured out how to sound out nut to tell us what he wanted, which completely surprised me. The other surprising thing was when we were doing number comprehension. We had done number production. Ten years earlier, he was right 90% or so. You could show him a tray of a bunch of different objects of different colors and numbers, so you'd have uh, you know, red and blue balls and blocks of different numbers, and they'd be all intermixed, and you'd say, how many blue blocks? And he'd tell you the number, 90% accuracy. But now we're doing comprehension. And again, he was totally bored with the task. He'd been doing it for so many years. You'd show him the task, and you'd say, you know, what color is six? And he'd look at you, and he'd take his beak, and he'd knock everything on the floor. Or he'd turn around, and he'd start preening. Or the worst of it was he'd look at all the colors on the tray and then tell you the colors that were not on the tray. So, you know, if it was blue, green, and purple, he'd say yellow, gray, orange, which really messed up the data collection. So we started using things like jelly bellies and different things to get him to work, and we were finally getting the data. And this particular day I came in and we had to do the test with blocks, and I set them up and I asked him, you know, what color three? And he looks at me and he goes five. And in this case, there were three, four, and six things on the tray. There were no five blocks. And I look at him and I go, Alex, you know, what color three? And he goes, five. And we do this a couple of times. I'm thinking, he's not throwing everything on the floor. He's not turning his back and craning. And he's not giving me wrong colors. So I finally look at him and I say, OK, Smarty, you know, what color five? Thinking, you know, what's he going to do? He keeps saying five. And he looks at me and he goes, none. And to this point, he'd only use none in terms of concepts like same and different. And we'd ask him what's same and what's different, and he'd say color, shape, matter, or none, if nothing were same or different. Or if we asked him what object was bigger or smaller, and he'd give us the color or the material or say none if they were the same size. So he had transferred the concept of the absence of an attribute to the absence of a set of objects, which was a zero-like concept. And in the West, we didn't have a zero-like concept until like the 1600s, and here was a parrot doing this on his own. I mean, I was very happy there was a student there to corroborate what was going on, because I didn't think anybody would, would have believed me.